how to gain access to the Bell uh, 4K TV box. Press and hold the menu button on the remote until this appears. And there you go, you can make many changes on this box. You can change the setting to static or DCHP. You can specify all kinds of addresses on it, which is very handy. And you can, yeah. And the advanced you can change a lot of things. A lot of things. And, uh, if you fuck up anything, you can always do a factory reset. Right now, I'm just fucking around with this thing because, you know, I don't care. And if I causes it to crash, I can just reverse that function that I've changed. I was originally set to no. I can change a few things on there and uh, probably cause the crash. Oh, bootloader menu. It doesn't show that, unfortunately. I had to hold the menu to even get to this section. I'm going to run a diagnosis. I'm probably going to change the splash attribute and maybe change the splash screen to show zero. That would be nice. I want to see a text coming on this bitch. But I'll do that later on. Right now, you got options like this. Or, you can... Oh, wow. I could even change this to pal. Nice. Bells on about this, but I don't think it gives a shit. I'm going to run the diagnostics. So, let's do this. It's going to reboot, obviously. So, it's going to boot into the diagnostics firmware. So, we'll have to wait patiently and see what happens. Obviously, this part has gone blurry. Ah, there we are. Now it's in the diagnostics mode, so that works. So, so we'll see how far that long this takes. Doesn't show a cursor, obviously, because, uh, ah, downloading the diagnostics software. That's pretty nice. Yes, the old school way of recording a screen. With the camera. That's how they did it way back in the day. And I kind of love doing that. Ah, starting the software. Nice. This is Linux, by the way. This is what it uses, Linux. There's no mouse and keyboard support, so I can't... I tried plugging shit in before, and you can't get a cursor. For the life of me. And I can try that right now, while you're waiting for this son of a bitch. Oh, I guess it rebooted instead. I guess it can't work that. Let's see if it doesn't, uh, nope, it's not going to diagnostic mode, unfortunately. It's rebooting. I guess I have to switch it back, maybe? Let's move it to green, so, oh, wait a second. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's because I told to show the, uh, box on it. That shows an X clock. That shows the actual time, too, which is kind of funny. I think that's the actual diagnostic software that's on there. Play sure. I don't think the clock's going to move, but, you know. Oh, okay. This is nice. I guess i got to set the time. Okay, uh, month is August, so 07. Next. The date is August 2nd. Next, and the year is 2021. Oops. How do I go back? Okay. Okay. Next. Okay. On two. Okay. Enter. There. Okay. Ah, there we are. I can fix that. There we are. Ah, that's what the diagnosis does. It allows you to set the date and time. Oh. This is slower than usual when it responds. Enter. There we are. Time is currently... Uh, 10.01. 1. Oh. Oh. 1. Actions. Okay. Give that a second. Ready to start test. Make sure something can the gateway. Press any key when ready. This is the diagnostic part, so play assured it's the actual domain. And I tried gaining access to it, but I couldn't on a web browser, so that's a problem. So, I'll just give it some time to do it. 
going on five minutes, but this is just normal. Now, let's see this test. This is good to make sure everything's working properly. Let me just give that a bit of time. Unfortunately, I've actually tried earlier when this, I got into this. Great. I hope this thing didn't do this reboot. Oh, no, it's fine. It's testing the display. All right. Unfortunately, I did try a keyboard and mouse when this booted into this before, and this was because the whole thing froze and I had to factory reset it by other means. There was a way of doing it, luckily. And I could not get it to detect the keyboard or mouse. Meaning that data portions of the USB ports on this box is disabled. Unfortunately. And that sucks. If you're curious about the box is our model name, while this test completes, it's going to take a while anyway. The box is right there. And that's the model name. VIP5662W. That's the name of the box you can actually get this information from when you trigger the diagnostic test. Not to mention the panel you're actually looking at is at least 15 years old. And it continues to serve us well. Or serve me well. Pretty goodly. It does not support 4K. I've tried that. It does not display it. Unfortunately, it just shows no, sig no signal input. So, yeah. It is what it is. So, it did the first test. That's nice. This is information in the past. The self test, probably doing RAM storage, which is a one terabyte hard disk. And, uh,. Integrity tests, then the interactive tests will be next. So, this could take a while. But once this goes past, we do the next test. And then, after once this completes, I will get the option to do another retest of everything or log the results. And I don't know where to access that fucking log file. I would probably have. Uh, yeah, that, that's going to be a bit of a pickle. There's no way of plugging a USB drive in there, and I don't think I can save the log file, unfortunately. But I can try and view the log, but I don't know what that's going to do, to be honest. So, we just patiently wait. I'm going to pause this, and... Actually, no, I'm just going to let it run. I can just cut results out of it so we don't miss a damn thing. Hmm, my battery's charged. And the charger is blinking red and blue, which indicates a problem. Oh. Uh-oh. That's a problem. That is a problem. Well, that always does because there's no FTP server complete uh, configured. Failure. Okay. Interactive tests. Other I/O tests. Lab tests. Nice. It blinks these ones. Yes, they passed. I'm not going to intentionally fail because I'd be stupid. Let's see if it uploads DNS failure because Bell changed their servers. Okay, select. Clear recordings. <laughs> okay, I can always not worry about that. Okay, I'll probably have to make some changes after. Let's see. Oh, it's trying to upload the results. But it can't because the FTP server is down. Now I know. Okay, back. Oh, that was already that. Okay, back. Back. Log results. 
obviously it's gonna fail because I gotta set net I gotta have to set an FTP server on that back. Okay. All right, that's done. Okay. Press and hold the exit button to reboot. And it's gonna do it. Give that a moment. And nothing's happening. Okay. Press and hold the menu button. Nothing's happened. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, I got some information here. Read baseline home. Successful. Okay. Back. Language. Oh, I can select from four different languages. I'll keep it in English. Open source information. Okay, I gotta manually read with the box. And that's what you shall do. There we are. And that concludes the diagnostic test of the box. Now we'll watch it as it reboots into the regular format it normally does. Sadly, there is no exit button on the damn thing. Now it starts up like this from now on. This is a lot better than a blank screen, would you say? Apparently, yes, this is a lot better. However, I gotta see if I can change the splash screen. And I'll probably end up doing that later on. Hopefully I can actually get the text to show, and that should be splash screen zero. Fortunately, it won't be during this video. There we are. I like that light white screen much easier. Anyways, I'm going to cut it back. Thank you for watching. I guess you didn't want to see that uh, licenses thing, so I just skipped that. I took that out of the video. I originally it was at 3.13, I set the splash protocol to zero, so let's see if that does anything with this. This is what I want to see. If it's going to show the splash screen, or is it not going to show the splash screen? This is what we want. I want to see scrolling text going by. Not bullshit. Yes, I just started it back up again. I'm just going to make confirm that. Okay, I'm going to put it to 1 instead of 0. 0, what? I'll delete both. I'll just put it to 1. Let's see if that actually doesn't get done. Okay. Let's save and reboot. I'm just going to give it time for it to do its thing. Because 3.13 shows the actual splash screen, the Eris logo, which it now shows from now on since I made the change. So let's see if it's going to show something else. So we just wait and see. Okay, so value 1 shows the boot screen. That's fine. But I want it to show nothing. So I'm going to invoke this. And I'm going to change that to be 0 now. Zero. Done. Let's see if it'll actually do anything. This is going to show flying text. Scrolling text like the matrix. That's what we want to see. I don't know if this does anything. And by far, if it causes the box to crash, I will have to just go back. No, it actually doesn't. Shit. Well, this sucks. It's probably just a firmware boot, so we just got to give it a bit of a wait. Okay. Let's see if it's going to show anything. Nope, still. See. Obviously, there's a blank screen here. No, it still doesn't. Uh, fuck. Well, I guess there's not much you can do about that, but we'll see if the settings actually change, take effect. Shows this that it jumps to zero as it uh, boots into a normal mode. I'll pause this. There's obviously nothing's going to happen after this. It's just going to keep switching. Yeah, we're not seeing any flying texts, unfortunately. So, I guess I tried. 